you've already seen in Bobby Wine. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you. Vinovi Abdala, mon vrai Covid, Vinovi Abdala. But so many people put themselves out to make this film, and the footage came from many, many different, extremely brave people. Unfortunately, in Uganda, journalists and cameramen uh, get no special treatment. There's, there's not such a thing as if someone's seen as a press or a journalist, they're protected. Many, many people filming got injured. Moses actually got shot in the face at one point, and there's many, many cameramen, some of whose footage we used, who were on the campaign trail in the thick of it with Bobby and the team who suffered really, really terrible things. So this film is, is really a tribute to all of those people and all of the Ugandans, and there's lots of people we couldn't credit in the film because it would be, they're still in Uganda, it would be unsafe for them. So it's a massively collaborative effort. Did you come to a point that you considered you had to stop filming because of you were putting the black roofs? Yeah, I mean, very, very much so, but it's almost felt like... I, I grew up, I was born in Uganda and I had a special love for the country. And it just felt like we couldn't stop, we would be letting people down. And whatever we went through, as whatever the filmmaking team went through, was nothing compared to what people in Uganda, <laughs> and what <laughs> what in Uganda have gone through. This people, in Uganda, just by having the slightest association, it might be a sticker on your motorbike, <laughs> it might be wearing a red t-shirt, any association with Bobby and his team puts you at massive risk. So people are daily sacrificing. So as filmmakers, we certainly didn't feel that we could not 
carry on filming. We had to carry on filming because we were taking far less risks by a long way than Bobby and all of the Ugandans who really oh, no, take a on there. Movie, um, yeah, we did that. This is a speech. You've been working under incredible conditions, we've been seeing. Um, uh, what about Barbie and the kids? Are they still coping, or how did they cope? Uh, Barbie and the kids have been an amazing pillar of support to me. They continue to be they were premier, in the eh? only stand as far as uh, I. If I'm fun. There's so much about Bobby that is not in the movie. Just like there's so much brutality that was kept out. In fact, at one point I was asking Chris, why did you decide to make this film so clean? Because we thought that it was an opportunity to show the world how brutal it can be. But he guided that if we, if we show too much violence, you know, it might even disgust people and doesn't get the, the viewership that we hope to get. So this is not even a fraction of the violence that happens there. But Papi has been a source of uh, support for me and the children. They are still there. They are used to it. Uh -huh. Not that they, it does not affect them, but you know, it's the reality they know. Yeah. Yeah, Christopher. When we spoke before, you said when Bobby saw the film for the first time, he said to you, my God, why did you just leave out all the violence what we just saw the film? We actually said, why did you make yourself and you look so good? <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was a bit shocked by that. <laughs> I was joking. But no, I, I was good. I mean, what happened was we've obviously done, we spent two and a half years in the cutting room, and we looked at cutting this film many, many different ways. We filmed people who had been tortured in medieval ways. We filmed people who had had their fingers chopped off. We filmed the most awful, awful suffering. And at various points, we had more of it in the film. But ultimately, I think you can just get to the point where it's just too much. And we decided as filmmakers that the film would be far more powerful if you saw the whole thing through Bobby and Barbie and those close to them. If you felt their pain, it would relate far more than just seeing a catalogue of horror. But the one thing I can assure you that catalogue of horror is that it's pretty awful. Um, Bobby, I just have some point when you were in Washington and um, you're being interviewed by a TV journalist. She asks you, um, in case you do become President someday open. Um, how do you prevent not becoming like the guy that you are fighting? She was asking you. And then you said to her, um, We've got to empower the people. I fear that as well, I've got to empower the people. And then I thought, Okay, empowering the people, that's like 10 points. But then, what about ruling a country? Because we're looking at a country. Um, I've, I've also lived there. I know. It is a rotten country if it comes to bureaucracy and how it is governed. It's like three decades of corruption, of uh, stealing ministers. Um, yeah, it's like the, the crony elite. How could you change such a system? Uh, thank you. It's true that looking at Museveni, General Museveni, who was one time a favorite to so many of us. So many of us admire General Seveni, the younger version of him. So looking at what he has become now, it scares us and proves to us that anybody can get corrupted. So our trust is not in individuals and we don't trust trying to build individuals, not even myself. We believe in building institutions that will hold all of us accountable. And we can only do that when we do it together, so that any leader that rises after General Museveni is accountable to the people and is held accountable by those institutions which cannot be, you know, subjected to human greed and human corruption. Yeah.
Ano bonna no bazungu. Na Uganda baganya okujja okuwagira. So where would you then, I mean, imagine you do get power, where would you start? How do you rebuild back what has been broken down? Um, first of all, like we say, it's not about an individual to rebuild it. But first of all, to take power, absolute power, out of the hands of an individual. That will change so much. Today, all the budget, all the preoccupation of the Ugandan government is keeping power, not improving lives, not improving service delivery, but keeping power. That is the focus. And uh, once we change the focus, once we know that a leader will come and go, then whichever leader comes will seek to leave a good leadership, will seek to appease the people through service delivery, through better governance, so that the people who actually have the power can always really trust that leader or that party people or that power and college. Power. So ultimately to take power back to the hands of the people so that a leader has to appease the people by doing better and creating better a better Uganda so that that leader will always be reappointed by those people. In the film you ask the question, you say, um, do Western donors who are putting so much money into this government, are they actually seeing what is happening? It's very unlikely that they don't know. So how, Christopher, because you're looking at this as well, how do you explain that still like millions, maybe billions of dollars are poured into a country that is like such a clear and brutal dictatorship? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I found particularly depressing is you make the film and there's a fair amount of press and you know, everyone's coming out in the New York Times, and the Washington Post, so everyone's coming out and saying how awful this is and journalists and you know you have the American government saying they're concerned and you have the European government saying they're concerned. And then the election passes and the minister of well, the Great Britain tweeted Congratulations. And then very quickly after that, everything's forgotten and it's business as normal. I mean, the the West 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 millions. Bobby says in the film, the Americans give over 100 million. In fact, it's over a billion. Uh, the European Union mm. huge amounts of, huge amounts of money. And the reason this happens is it's very. It's very convenient to have Bobby someone who has troops in Somalia, in Congo, and he's considered to be someone who does some work for our interests in the Western world. But the cost of that is the cost of Ugandan people, the cost is to 44 million people. And it's just it's just really really sad. Yeah, it's really sad. 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 It's really our interests are put before people like the Ugandan people, and it's just, it goes so quickly, it just goes back to Bobby the Wayne So you're saying he's considered an ally for the European and other international players. What is needed, Bobby, for the international community to um, no longer sacrifice the interests of the Ugandan people? I would not know. And what is needed to change that, that attitude? Um, I want to sound polite, <laughs> but that comes at the risk of sound politically correct. I would rather sound real. And if I was to be real, I would say what is needed is to stop the hypocrisy. To stop being patterns in crime. Like I said, this is awful, but it's not even the one percent of the crime that General Seven is committing and the people of Uganda. 
and we are united together first and foremost as members of the international community by values that we hold together, values of democracy, respect for the rule of law and respect for human rights. When Saddam Hussein did what General Seven is doing to the people of Uganda, he was sanctioned. When Robert Mugabe did to the people of Zimbabwe what General Seven is doing to the people of Uganda, he was sanctioned. When Charles Taylor did the same, when Gaddafi did the same, was sanctioned. Why yeah. then is General Seven not being sanctioned? You know, all that General Seven is doing is up there for the international community to see. We are trying to go by the values of non-violence. We are men. We are men. We, we can choose to be violent, but because we know that it's not part of the values that the world holds together, why is the moral international community supporting what is moral? These are seen as big democracies, the democracies in Europe. Why are they not supporting democracy? Why are they supporting dictatorship? So let them stop sponsoring tyranny in Uganda.